I am going to discuss class diagrams. The owner of the slides I use here is Dr. Timothy Lethbridge at the University of Ottawa. So if you go to this link, then you can download these slides. Okay, actually uh, this video is uh, class diagrams part 5. Okay, so uh, if you uh, go to my YouTube channel, the name of the channel is uh, Kasun uh, Ranga uh, Vijay Veera. Okay, so this one, this is my full name. So if you go to my channel, uh, you will uh, find a playlist called uh, UML. Under this playlist, uh, you will find other videos uh, related to class diagrams. So uh, class diagrams, class diagrams part 4, uh, class diagrams part 3, class diagrams part 2, uh, class diagrams part 1. Okay. Now, if you look at uh, this particular presentation, there are 57 slides okay so uh, in uh, class diagrams one video uh, i have discussed 1 to 17 slides okay then in class diagrams two video i have dis uh, discussed uh, 18 to 30 and in third video uh, i have discussed uh, 30 1 to 37 and in fourth video i have discussed uh, 37 sorry uh, 38 to 49 and in this video i am going to discuss the 50 slide downwards okay uh, now let's start our discussion uh, Uh, so, in this particular slide, uh, I want to talk about identifying generalizations and interfaces uh, in class diagrams. Uh, once you have drawn the class diagram, okay, so uh, you can find uh, there are two ways to identify generalizations. One thing is bottom up. That means, let's say you have similar classes. You can observe uh, similar classes and we group them together uh, to uh, create a super class. Okay. So, this is one way. Uh, this is called, uh, this is called bottom up. Bottom up. Okay. That means in this particular direction, and uh, this process actually we call this generalization. Okay, generalization bottom up. Okay, so the other way of uh, finding generalizations is the top down approach. So, we look at uh, some general classes. So, we see whether we can specialize them to some uh, subclasses. Okay. So, this is, this is in this particular direction, top down. 
okay top down so we call this specialization however so these are the two ways of finding generalizations and now uh, we have already discussed uh, about uh, interfaces and superclasses then uh, the question is create an interface instead of a superclass in which situations we have to create an interface instead of a superclass so uh, one thing is the classes are very dissimilar except for having a few operations in common we find uh, several classes okay they are not that much similar okay they are very dissimilar very dissimilar okay very dissimilar however they have some uh, few few operations in common in that case we cannot create a super class okay we cannot create a super class because uh, we will not be able to connect them using ESA relationship since these are dissimilar okay we cannot find a super class such that we cannot we can connect them using ESA relationship that is not possible so you have to think and understand that what I have told okay so in that situation we we need to we have to create an interface instead of a super class okay and uh, the other thing let's say uh, these two classes already have a super class and uh, okay these two already have a super class now we can see these uh, four classes are also similar okay so then we can group them together no we can group them together and then in this way we might think we can uh, create a super class then uh, what is the problem here what is the problem here okay problem is the restriction in java here we deal with java java does not support multiple inheritance i have discussed this one multiple inheritance multiple inheritance means inheriting from more than one class more than one class okay this is not possible in java okay there are programming languages uh, that support multiple inheritance but java in java programming language multiple inheritance is not supported in java if you consider one particular class okay either it does not have a super class or else it can have at most one super class okay that is about java okay and uh, in this type of situations now uh, we cannot create a super class therefore we can think about uh, creating it as a, as an interface okay this one as an interface okay so in this way uh, using a dotted line uh, we represent uh, the realizations okay now we can think now this is an interface okay in this situation instead of a super class we can create a create an interface uh, then the third situation is uh, different implementations of the uh, same class might be available so if you have one particular class let's say there are different different implementations for the same class in that situation uh, we can uh, group okay 
and to an interface we can uh, sorry ne interface so using an interface uh, we can we can group them together okay that is the other uh, situation okay uh, then uh, let's uh, move uh, to the next slide now uh, this is how we have performed the generalization uh, so this particular slide i have uh, discussed in a different way without generalizations in our uh, fourth uh, fourth video class diagrams number 4 okay here we have identified uh, generalizations now we have generalized it as person role okay person role and here person person class there are two attributes name and id number okay name and id number and uh, here uh one person role uh, let's uh, you will understand what is this later anyway one particular object is related to one okay since multiplicity is one one particular person one object is related to one particular person object one per particular person object uh, either zero two that means zero person role so one person role or two roles are there okay now uh, here one particular the role of a person can be either a passenger passenger role okay can be a passenger or an employee so here we can this passenger and employee they have similar uh, they have similar they can group together they have similar attributes name uh, gender date of birth okay those type of things are similar therefore we can uh, group them together uh, we use the concept of generalization and now Uh, in the passenger role here here we have job function okay job function and now uh, let's see one particular passenger passengers are actually doing booking okay this is a booking class and i have already discussed this part uh, in my previous video lesson one passenger can do zero or more bookings and one particular booking is attached to a one particular passenger okay then uh, here we deal with uh, specific flights a uh, specific flight and now uh, this is uh, one booking one particular seat that means one seat is situated exactly in one particular flight okay one seat cannot be situated in two flights therefore here it is one then one specific flight uh, flight can have zero or more bookings okay and uh, now here if you look at employees one employee can work in zero or more specific flights one specific flight has zero or more employees okay and uh, here 
uh, we can have regular flight uh, particular in a particular time is there and flight number is there okay here for one, uh, one particular regular flight there are uh, zero or more uh, zero or more specific flights one specific flight related to exactly one regular flight okay so here again we have a reflexive association uh, and here the role let's say role is supervisor supervisor and if you put one and zero or more here the meaning of this one is one particular employee can have zero or more uh, supervisees understood that means in other words one particular employee can supervise zero or more other employees and if you consider one particular employee he or she can have exactly one particular supervisor okay every employee has a supervisor and at most one exactly one supervisor okay so here actually our emphasis was on uh, generalization okay generalization now here you can see if you consider passenger and employee they have common attributes and operations okay therefore they are similar since they are similar we create a super class including the common attributes and common operations of these two classes okay now here this is a person person we associate with the person role here person role and here 0 1 no 2 understood that means 0 no role is no person role may person may have no any person roles or one role or two roles okay likewise here we connect uh, Okay. Uh, this is the next slide. Um, allocating responsibilities uh, to classes. Uh, once you have uh, drawn the class diagram. Okay. Once you have drawn the class diagram. Now uh, let's go back uh, to one of our previous slides. Okay, these slides actually uh, related to our previous video. This is the suggested sequence of activities of uh, designing a class diagram. First, identify the set of candidate classes. Then we try to identify associations and attributes. Then uh, I just described how to uh, how to find generalizations then the next step is responsibilities okay classes are there now we have yes uh, I will uh, draw it like this now we have identified uh, uh, candidate classes okay candidate classes and there are three parts in the graphical notation of one particular class okay this is the first step then 
we more uh, we find associations and attributes let's say we have certain associations i i do not uh, uh, let's say in this way we have uh, associations okay then uh, attributes uh, we identify attributes now i have already discussed how we can identify attributes and uh, names already we have found uh, in the first step okay and uh, as a third step we have found uh, some uh, generalizations okay generalizations in this way now next step now this is an iterative process okay next step is to uh, list main responsibilities of each class okay now uh, let's go to the relevant slide now here now how to find responsibilities a responsibility is something that the system is required to do okay uh, let's um, let's discuss it in detail later okay then you will understand each functional requirement must be attributed to one of the classes okay so whole system the system as a whole then it has certain responsibilities that's why we build a particular system okay so we should be able to relate each responsibility to a particular class okay uh, that is the uh, each functional requirement must be attributed to one of the classes all the responsibilities of a given class should be clearly related and if you consider one particular class one particular class now we assign set of responsibilities to this particular class and each responsibility should be related to each other okay that, that that's what uh, we mean by encapsulation okay so if you know uh, the fundamentals of object oriented programming we encapsulate okay related uh, things okay so that is a uh, little bit about encapsulation and now uh, now if a class has uh, too many responsibilities consider splitting uh, it into distinct classes once uh, you try to uh, assign responsibilities let's say one particular class got lot of responsibilities that is not suitable when you model we try to do it as simple as possible okay as einstein once said science is not to make uh, simple things complex okay so modeling is there modeling is also a science no? so it is to simplify our uh, design process okay not to make it complicated so if we see there are a lot of responsibilities are getting assigned to a one particular class then we might think is there a way to split this class into several classes okay in that way we can think splitting is not a straightforward one we just we are not going to cut it into two okay uh, splitting uh, you have to consider when you split one particular class into several classes then uh, this each uh, is splitted unit so you have to maintain as, uh, the property of encapsulation okay and now uh, if you uh, go to the next step if a class has no responsibilities attached to it then it is probably useless now classes are there to achieve certain responsibilities that are actually responsibilities of our uh, software system okay so if we cannot attribute any responsibility to, to a one particular class then sometimes sometimes we can guess sometimes it may be useless we have to think about removing it okay not exactly we can say it, it should be removed but there is a possibility most probably it is useless okay and now 
uh, the last step when a responsibility cannot be attributed to any of the existing classes then a new class should be created so if you consider one particular responsibility if it cannot be attributed any of the classes we have found so far then uh, we might think of creating a new class proposing a new class to our class diagram okay so uh, those are the things now is still you are you do not have clear understanding about what is a responsibility okay i i just told responsibility 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 and so on okay but then uh, you will understand it okay please wait okay so uh, to determine responsibilities one particular thing is you can uh, perform use case analysis use case analysis uh, okay that is uh, the related diagram uh, in use case analysis is use case diagram this is also one particular diagram uh, that is used in uml okay in uml okay uh, and now you know class in class diagram uh, we have studied the structure of our inform if it is an information system we have now planned the structure of the information system using a class diagram then behavior how to model the behavior for an example the interaction between the system and particular users for an example uh, a particular student is trying to add the course okay add the course then the interaction between uh, interaction okay the interaction between the student and the system so that is a particular behavior of our system so that should be modeled using use case diagrams i have separate videos uh, discussing use case diagrams then you can watch them and get the sound understanding about uh, use case analysis okay so um, for the time being let's say uh, determining uh, responsibilities can be done by a particular process course use case called use case analysis okay uh, look for the other way okay for the time being let's uh, forget, forget this okay the other way is look for verbs and noun describing actions in the system description we look uh, look for verbs and nouns verbs and nouns that uh, describe uh, nouns that describe actions actions in the system description okay so still uh, if you do not have clear idea about responsibilities uh, yes then you will understand in near future okay now these are the categories of responsibilities uh, setting and getting the values of attributes okay setting and getting values those are the responsibilities so in order to achieve those responsibilities we create setters and getters setter methods and getter methods in java okay uh, creating and initializing uh, new instances so these responsibilities uh, using a constructor using a using the default constructor or using a user defined constructor you can do that okay uh, loading and load into and save in from persistent storage that is another thing then destroying existing instances adding and deleting links of associations copying converting transforming transmitting or outputting computing new numerical results for an example calculating gpa is a particular responsibility okay that responsibility should be attributed to a student class okay calculating the gpa of one particular student calculating the average gpa value of a one particular course unit that responsibility should be attributed to course unit class yeah in that way you have to understand okay a particular responsibility should be attributed to 
the suitable class calculate in the GPA to the student class calculate in the average GPA of a particular course unit uh, to course unit class okay that that is how we have to do that uh, navigating and searching searching okay uh, navigating and searching or any other specialized work those are the responsibilities now now i hope you have some idea about responsibility what is responsibility in the previous slide you could not get uh, get the idea now you have got some idea in the next slides uh, you will clear it uh, as a whole okay now this is an example uh, using uh, uh, using our using the class diagram we have uh, shown in a previous slide okay now these are the responsibilities creating a new regular flight okay that is the responsibility searching for 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 a flight modifying attributes of a flight creating a specific flight booking a passenger that is a responsibility you know passenger books a specific flight that is a responsibility of our system our system should, should facilitate that our system should allow a passenger to book a specific flight okay so that is a responsibility of our system now you you understand what is the responsibility canceling a booking the passenger should be able to cancel a booking use booking um, through our system so canceling a booking is a responsibility of our system okay now you understand it properly okay okay let's move Fifty five, fifty five. Slide number fifty five. Prototyping a class diagram on paper. This is how, in industry, they create the class diagram. Okay, if it is a complicated system, designing the class diagram is not a simple thing. It is difficult. It is difficult. Okay. So, what we do is. As you identify classes, you write their names on small cards. One thing is now you can analyze the domain. You can discuss uh, with the users, clients and perform a domain analysis. And then through the domain analysis, you can identify candidate classes. Okay. Then uh, you write... Um, their names in small cards class names let's say then uh, you have these cards okay you have cards we have written the names of uh, classes in these cards okay now uh, in each we have three parts okay name set of attributes set of operations okay so uh, as you identify attributes and responsibilities you list them on the cards so you write uh, attributes okay then responsibilities you write in these cards if you cannot uh, fit all the responsibilities on one card this suggests uh, you should split the class into two related classes. If uh, we try to write responsibilities in one particular ca card, and we understand that there are a large number of responsibilities related to this particular class, then uh, it is the time. Okay, it is the time to think about splitting this particular class into several classes 
okay and this is splitting is not straight forward we are not going to cut it into two but we have to think about uh, whether think whether the concept of encapsulation can be maintained in the splitted classes okay that is also important that fact also you have to consider okay um, then uh, move the cards around on a whiteboard to arrange them into a class diagram now it's easy now these are set of cards uh, you can move them here and they are on the whiteboard okay so that we can uh, if there are associations okay if two classes far away are associated we can get them closer and likewise uh, the design of the class diagram we can make it smarter okay then uh, draw lines among the cards to represent associations and generalizations then uh, you using lines we can represent associations and generalizations I, I was talking about the whiteboard okay and set of cards but nowadays we have uh, tools like uh, one particular example you can google this and one particular example you can google google argo uml that is a particular tool that can be used to draw uh, uml diagrams then uh, what i have discussed in this particular slide can be done uh, using this particular tool okay there are you can create classes and move them here and there in in that environment okay then uh, we try to identify operations now you know responsibilities what are responsibilities now you have an idea then what is an operation okay operations are needed to realize the responsibilities of each class one responsibility responsibility yes one particular responsibility we can achieve using set of operations okay set of operations are needed uh, usually you know we modularize one responsibility is there we can modularize it we can we can perform it using a set of operations okay perform a booking okay perform a booking we can uh, do it using set of operations one particular responsibility that that is achieved using set of operations if it is possible using one particular operation that's okay okay uh, usually we need set of operations there may be several op operations per responsibility uh, the main operations that implement responsibility are normally declared public so one particular operation this one we declare as public and uh, other methods that collaborate to perform the responsibility must be private as possible then we call this this is public because we are going to call this operation from outside the class that is why we have made this public but within this method we may call any other methods okay those methods it is not necessary we make them public therefore we can keep them private okay that is the usual thing okay not a rule but usually we do it in that way okay then uh, 56 uh, now we have come uh, to the last slide okay okay so now um i want to wrap up and uh, this is the last video regarding class uh, diagrams okay so uh if you go to my youtube channel 
this is the name okay this is the name of the channel this is the name of the channel then you can find uh, UML a playlist called UML okay then uh, I have now class diagrams one okay in this particular presentation we had 57 uh, 57 slides were there okay now in class diagrams one video I have discussed 1 to 17 okay in class uh, diagrams two video I have discussed 18 to uh, 30 okay 18 to 30 then uh, class diagrams 3 I have discussed from 31 to 37 okay then uh, class diagrams 4 I have discussed from 38 to uh, 49 this, these are the slide numbers okay so in this one class diagrams five i have discussed from 50 to 57 so using this set of videos i have uh, covered all the 50 uh, seven slides okay if you uh, go to this particular link you will uh, find uh, these slides under chapter 5 chapter 5 the name is modeling link with classes okay some of the slides uh, it contains more 58 59 and so on some of the slides at the end I have removed from this presentation uh, in order to simplify the discussion. Okay, so and uh, these slides are based on a particular uh, book. Okay, that uh, link to that particular book is available uh, if you go to this particular link. Okay, and now uh, we have finished discussing about uh, class diagrams now uh, let's uh, discuss how a complete information system can be modeled using uml and i am talking about a small scale uh, software okay or oh, an information system so in order to do that in UML diagrams, okay, so we we need class diagram. Class diagram we need. Uh, this will uh, discuss the structure, the structure uh, of the Uh, of our information system we can analyze the domain and now create the structure then now you know how to uh, find the attributes and operations in that way you you know okay now uh, how can we identify the interaction with the user and the system okay then for an example a student tries to uh, register for a one particular course okay that is an interaction then students uh, student does something then system does a certain response okay likewise there is an interaction between the student and the system so those type of things uh, you can model using use case diagram 
interaction between the users and the system. Okay, uh, these two are useful in order to gather all the requirements we want to develop the system. After that, uh, we need sequence diagram. Sequence diagram using this one. Uh, this is an interaction diagram. Now, uh, once you have operations, the order of execution of these operations we can represent using sequence diagrams. Okay, and uh, internal behavior activity diagram. Using the activity diagram, we can model what happens internally in our system. For an example, if a student clicks calculate GBA button, then how the calculation is performed within the system, okay? That can be modeled using activity diagrams, okay? So, uh, these are the four diagrams we need to design and develop a small scale information system okay so there are many other diagrams state diagrams deployment diagrams component diagrams okay so they you need those type of diagrams if the system is going to be bigger okay but uh, a small scale one okay so in this way you can model again using the class diagram we can understand the structure we can plan plan the structure of our information system and using the use case diagram you we can represent how uh, users interact with the system a student registers for a particular course okay a lecturer uploads a material uh, to the information system okay uh, okay registrar enters the grades of the students okay so those are the interactions those interactions you can model using use case diagrams okay uh, so here we can clearly identify the requirements okay so the here is structure then uh, once you have identified the structure we only know what are the attributes and what are the operations in certain classes then they interact when we try to perform something when the student is trying to add the particular course then there is an interaction between these objects operation of one particular object is executed then operation of another object is executed and so on the sequence of these operations getting executed we can represent using sequence diagram that is why we call it sequence diagram and once uh, the student presses a particular button calculate GPA then uh, internally calculation is happening so uh, we want to draw a diagram like a flow chart okay so uh, activity diagram is something like that okay so in that way now if you know these uh, four di diagrams you can model a small scale information system successfully so okay and uh, now again i if you could understand uh, these uh, videos and if you gain something uh, to your life uh, through these videos then i have a request uh, please subscribe uh, my uh, YouTube channel and also if you have any questions regarding these videos you can mention the question in the comment section then definitely I will answer okay so uh, and uh, the other thing is uh, finally I thank Dr. Timothy Ledbridge at the University of Ottawa okay he granted me the permission uh, to use these slides uh, to create YouTube videos and also for you uh, thank you very much uh, 
for watching the video